Hi guys! In this video we're going to be looking at particle model for electromagnetic radiation, energy of a photon and we're going to finish with a summary. We're going to start off by discussing the particle model for electromagnetic radiation. We have seen that electromagnetic radiation can behave as waves but it can also behave as a particle. So for example here we can see we've got an electromagnetic wave. However, electromagnetic radiation can also behave as a particle. So here we also have EM radiation as a particle. It was first suggested by Max Planck that light could exist as quantized packets of energy or quanta of energy called photons. So here we have our packet of energy, which is a photon. And this is the image we use to represent a photon. And we include a wave inside a circle to show the wave nature and particle nature of EM radiation. So he suggested this after observing that electromagnetic energy could only exist in certain values. So if each of these lines represent a certain value for energy, then Planck observed that electromagnetic radiation could only take these specific values of energy. So what this means is that we cannot have EM radiation with a value of energy at this point. So it's only these specific values that EM radiation can take. So the photon model can be used to describe electromagnetic radiation. For example, it's used to explain how electromagnetic radiation interacts with matter, such as in the photoelectric effect. So in the photoelectric effect, we have some incoming radiation, and this could be UV light. And it was observed that when this radiation was incident on a metal with conducting electrons, so it was observed that if the incoming radiation was of a certain frequency, electrons would be emitted. And this phenomena can only be explained by using the photon model. So the photoelectric effect provides evidence for the particle-like nature of EM radiation. And we're going to be covering the photoelectric effect in a lot more detail in later videos. But at the moment, the main thing we need to take away from this is that it's evidence for the particle nature of EM radiation. So we've said that a photon is a packet of energy. So now we want to think about what value of energy the photon has. The energy of a photon is proportional to its frequency. So mathematically, we can write this as this, using the proportionality sign. And we can actually make this into an equation by introducing a constant of proportionality. So we can say that E is equal to H times F. So here E is the energy of the photon and this is given in joules. H is the constant of proportionality which we call Planck's constant. So that's Planck's constant. And finally F is the frequency and this is given in Hertz. The symbol H is Planck's constant and it has the following experimental value. So it was found that Planck's constant has value 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds and this is to three significant figures. And the unit of joule seconds comes from the unit of energy and the unit of frequency because we know that the unit of energy is joules and the unit of frequency is hertz but this is the same as seconds to the minus one. So if we're dividing energy by frequency because we can see here to get h from energy and frequency we must divide e by f 
we therefore get joules divided by second to the minus one, which is joule seconds. So that's where these units come from. So let's apply this equation to an example. A photon has frequency five times 10 to the 14 Hertz. What is its energy? So our first step is to write down the equation for energy of the photon. So we've just learned this and we know that the energy of a photon is given by E is equal to HF. So now all we have to do is substitute in the known values to find the energy. So let's do that. So the energy is going to be equal to Planck's constant, which we've just said is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 multiplied by the frequency, which we're told in the question is five times 10 to the 14 Hertz. So this gives us an energy of 3.315 times 10 to the minus 19. And we're gonna give our answer to three significant figures, which is 3.32 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So three significant figures. And we're giving our answer to three significant figures because we're using Planck's constant to three significant figures. We can write frequency in terms of wavelength and the speed of light, c, using the wave equation. So we know that the wave equation states that c is equal to f lambda. And we can rearrange this to get that f is equal to c divided by lambda. So now that we've got frequency in terms of wavelength and the speed of light, we can actually substitute this expression for frequency into the equation for the energy of a photon. So we can get another equation for the energy of a photon. So now we get that the energy of a photon is equal to h, and we know that the energy is given by h times the frequency, so now it's gonna be h times c divided by lambda. So we get the energy is now h times c divided by lambda. So this is our second equation for the energy of a photon. This equation has both wave elements from lambda and particle-like elements because of the photon's energy, E. So this displays to us the wave-like properties of EM radiation. So here we have a wave with a wavelength. That's where the wavelength comes from. But we also can see the particle-like nature of EM radiation because it has these discrete values for its energy. So this photon has energy E is equal to HF. From our equation, we can also see that the energy of a photon is inversely proportional to its wavelength. So we can see from this equation here that E is inversely proportional to its wavelength. And we can write that mathematically using the proportionality symbol, like so. So this actually tells us something about the properties of high energy photons and lower energy photons. This means that short wavelength photons have a lot more energy than long wavelength photons. So for example, here we have a larger wavelength. So this photon would be lower in energy. Whereas this photon here has a smaller wavelength. So it's therefore going to be higher in energy. So let's have a look at an example. A laser emits red light with wavelength 645 nanometers. What is the energy of each red photon emitted? So our first step is to write down the relevant equation for energy. So we can see here that in the question, we've been given the wavelength of the photon. So we're going to use our equation for the energy of a photon that involves wavelength, which is hc over lambda. Our second step is to convert the wavelength into meters. So we've been told that the wavelength of the red photon is 645 nanometers. Now nanometers is meters to the minus nine. So in order to convert this into meters, we're going to have to multiply 645 by 10 to the minus nine. 
And now we can do our final step, which is to substitute in the values we know to obtain the energy of the photon in joules. So the energy is going to be equal to Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, multiplied by the speed of light in a vacuum, which is 3 times 10 to the 8, and then divided by the wavelength of the photon in metres, which is 645 times 10 to the minus 9. And this gives us a value for the energy that is 3.08 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And this is two three significant figures. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.